One of the features that make the vintage elegance dish towel so adorable is the way that the letters curve around the shape of the utensils that are used on the dish towels. Let me show you how that's done and we'll explore a couple of different ways to shape lettering in this lesson for vintage elegance. First of all, we'll take our free design and drag it onto the screen. I'm going to right click and right click and ungroup so that I can separate these. Select my lasso tool and drag my lasso around and right click to select it. Now, let me scroll out a little bit and we will pull this one down and there you go. Now I've got space in between them, but I do want them grouped. So if I need to move them, they stay together as a design. So I'm going to group the fork and then I can select the spoon and group it as well. Now, uh, let's make sure I didn't move them out of alignment. They are aligned in the center. Okay, perfect. And let's see how big this is. It is, if I come up here, 5.98 inches. Now, I've measured my dish towel, and I do have 6 inches to put that in to where it looks nice if the dish towel is folded into thirds. So I'm going to make this just a wee bit smaller so that it fits nicely. And I'll do it proportionally, just like this because I want it to fit within that six inches. And that gives me almost a quarter of an inch on each side. We'll just do it specifically right here. I'll select my width to be, let's make it five inches and apply. Now I've got a good half inch on each side and that works well for me. The next thing I wanna do is select them again and I'm going to mirror image them right here. Click on the flip horizontal. The reason I'm doing that is I want my letters to flow downhill, if you will. And the utensils look just as well this way as the other way. The next thing I'm going to do is let's center this in my screen and make it a little larger. I'm going to select the text tool and click and we'll type in the word celebrate celebrate exclamation point all right now i do have on-screen text typing selected if you don't you would just type your text in here and then click apply okay so here's my text and this is done in the uh kurt script font the size is actually pretty good but i think i want to try a different font so i could scroll through and find the name i want or just click on the picture and that brings up all of my font options and i think i would like to use this one and click ok oh i do like that now Let's move, whoops, not just one letter. Let's put that back to an undo, or Control Z also does that. If you see, roll your cursor around. When you see it turn into the hand, then you can move the entire thing, okay? I'm gonna make this extend just a little bit bigger. Let's do, we'll select it and resize it a bit, okay? Now, the next thing I want to do here is click back on text and right click and put it on a path. Now with the path, I can change this baseline to go any way I want to. And to do that, I simply move my cursor so that it's over the baseline, right click and then select edit baseline. Now you'll see I've got three points, a blue one here, a blue one here, and a blue one here. This lets me uh, designate where I want this to go. So I want this to follow in this curve between the fork and the spoon. And I can make this curve a little more significant this way by changing the angle lines. See how this adjusts 
the curve any way I want to. I could also add another point on there. Let's make it just a gentle slope. And then I'm going to right click and it will move to that line. Now that's not too bad. Let's pull it down a little bit so it's not on the letter or on the spoon up at the top. That looks pretty good, but maybe it's slipping down just a little too far this way. And I also want to kern these a little bit. We're going to move this a little bit back toward the C. And where it goes around this curve, I'm going to just put these letters in a little bit differently. Spread them out. And then I think it might be fine. Right click and let's edit the baseline again. And I can add a point by just right clicking on the baseline after I've selected to edit it and then bring up and add another point and curve that back up a little bit more. And we'll see how that looks. Okay, now we can finish kerning our letters till we have them exactly the way we want them. I'm going to move this one back and you notice as I do that, Oh, here I've got a break between the R and the B. I want that lined up better. But these, where they're a little closer together, I could separate out just a hair. And when I do that, select the kerning for a single letter, it takes every letter after it. Let's see about this A and the T. We'll play with that. Okay, I think that works well. All right, now I'll just click off, and I think I like that just fine. So I will save the file, file, save as, and then save it in the place that I want and in th as the design that I want in the format that I need for my machine. The next towel I want to do, I want to put this egg beater on. So I just drag it onto my screen and I don't want it straight up and down. I want to give it a little attitude. So I'm going to select my rotation tool and just rotate it until I like the angle. And I think that looks good. That's kind of how I would put it in a bowl if I were going to uh, mix something. And now I'm going to add words. I click on the text tool up in the top left hand corner, then click on my screen and put in mix, hit enter to give me another line with inner love and right click to set it. Now, if I look over here at my alignment, I'm going to notice that everything is centered. Okay, that it's doing it down a center axis. I want that to be aligned left and then click apply. Now you'll notice they moved a little bit. Now let's position this. Whoops, not one letter at a time. I'm going to wait till I get my little hand up there. There we go. You see the hand, then you can move the whole thing and pull this down here so that the M is in place where I want the M to be. Now, this is very simply a matter of clicking on the text if I'm using on-screen text typing, or I could also do it up here and input a couple of spaces and click apply. The reason I like doing it down here though is that it moves as I type so I can see exactly how far over I want that to go. And I'll do the same thing with the love and move that over a little bit. Now, one thing that I want to adjust, I kind of like that pretty well. One thing I want to adjust though is the space between the, the lines. I have a line spacing of 25. I'm going to change that to 50 because I want them to be a little bit further apart in each of the lines. There we go. And now let's reposition that just a little bit and see how that looks. Oh, I think the love may be over just a little too far, so I can bring that back one. And let's click back off here. I'm going to change that to the red that's in the handle to see the color I like. Oh, I do like that. 
I could even move that up a little bit. Now when I select it, you'll notice when I select it without the text tool, I'm using my arrow function, the select tool instead of the text tool, then it gives me a box around it and it treats it as one item. So if you want to deal with it individually, you click on your text tool and then it will give you the um, all of the different symbols that you can deal with the letters individually. If you click on the select tool, then it treats it as one object. And I think I like that pretty well. So we will click File, Save As, and I will save that again in the file name of my choice, the destination of my choice, and the format I need for my machine. Now finally, let's do the potato masher. I'm going to drag that one in and um, let's rotate this so that it's pretty much laying on its side. Now I'm looking up here at my width. That's a little bit wider than what I want. So let's rotate it back. Of course, I could just resize the potato masher, but that gets me in a little bit. I am going to make it just a wee bit smaller. And now um, I'm going to rotate a little bit more. Okay, perfect. Now, the words I want to use with this one, and let's look at it in 3D. Isn't that cute? I'm going to make them in blue. So I click on my blue color at the bottom, click on my text, and I'm going to write in the word family. I-L-Y. Now, this one I want to be a little bit bigger. Different ways to change the size of your text is over here, I can change the height to a specific size. If I want that to be one inch, I can make it one inch and click apply. And now it's a little bit larger. If I want to make it, um, another way I could change the size would be to simply click on the select tool and make it bigger this way. Okay, so different options. Now, Let's go back to text. What I don't like is how far away the Emily is from the F. So let's turn that back over. That looks better to me. And move it down a little bit. Then by just selecting the text tool and using the different nodes on it, let's learn how these work. This one will raise this up and extend it. So if you were putting text in a megaphone, that would be awesome. But this is a potato masher, not a megaphone. So I'm going to click undo or control Z. Um, we could also do that from the bottom and drop it down, but we're not going to do that. With the front two uh, black boxes, it does the same thing. If you click on the double arrow, it makes it larger or smaller globally, so it keeps the same proportions. If you click on the arrows back here, you can squish it or make it longer. Now, that leaves these two center dots. I can make it curve up or curve down, and what I want to do is Center this and curve it down just a bit, like that. Now, I'm going to turn that Y in just a little bit so that it's attached. And because it's so close to the edge there that I like the way the rest of it's going, I can select that individual letter and just move it up. And there we go that simple. If I want to have that reflected in the top, I could also bring it down like that. Now, another option would be, with it selected, to right click and hit reset and put it back where it was originally, except for the Y it went it stayed where it was. So here's our original text box. 
Now, if you right click, you have another option here called envelope. And within these envelopes, we have one that's very similar to what we just did, which is the curved down. If I click that envelope, it automatically does that for me. Now I can extend this out a little bit. Maybe make it, a. Mm, let's undo that. I think I want the whole thing just a little bigger. So we'll do it this way. And move it back. And if we want to make that curve down a little bit lower, we can do that and even at the top, and you can make it very dramatic. There's a squished family, uh, but we don't want to do that. And I'm going to pull that A back in just a hair. And the I where I'm going to overlap these so that they really do look cursive and not separated because of the envelope we put them in. And there you go. I think that looks quite nice, except for the F. And I'm going to select that one and move it up a little bit. And maybe a little bit larger. There we go. So you can play and tweak all you want. Into